Hi guys, Johnny here, JDFM, hope you're well, thanks for joining me again. Season 2, Episode 1, Hirith, Call of the Dragon, here we go. So, after the last episode, disappointing end of the season, but let's not beat ourselves up. A positive, positive Lee campaign. But we're back, and this time we're going to do better. We've got rid of a lot of dead wood. A lot of old boys, a lot of people who are on big wages doing nothing for us. This lad who paid a lot of money for in terms of wages and he played three games. Do you know what I mean? Waste of money. So this year I've gone for a little bit of a change of tactic. Not spent a lot of money. More people have come to the door and the odd few have gone out on loan. And some Welsh players, we're at a point now where we can actually start getting our youngsters out there to get some more experience. But there were a few English boys hanging around that were out on loan last year. So Luke Young was one of them, went to Aldershot, who went up last year from our league, and Bobby Grant, the Forest Green for 45,000. Good, good player, but he's English, never gonna work. So let's talk about the ins. Like I say, we haven't spent much, and what we spent it on has been quality. So, biggest expense was Keston Davis from TNS, probably the best Welsh team out there outside of the English leagues and this lad used to pay for Swansea for a few years I say play he never actually played but he was with them so he's come in as really our best centre back now if you look at the stars up here in the comparison so he's come in John Clark for £500 16 years old five star potential decent stats lots of room for improvement advanced playmaker there's a theme, okay? 16, five-star potential. Jake Andrews, £450. 16, five-star potential. Really like the look of this guy. He's a bit short. Centre-back, good stats. I think he'll come good for us. Tyler Banks, Bangor City, £375. 16 years old, five-star potential. And to be fair, he looks quite good. His vision and technique and work rate are very high for, again, that centre attacking midfield role. So, that's the money we spent. Then, everything else has come through the door, costing us nothing. These, very recently, I needed some backup centre-backs. And this lad, Callum Watts, he's been on my radar for a while. Lots of his game I don't like, but some of the things I do. So, as a backup, he will do. He's 18, his potential, the safe bet. We're not going to lose off him. Rob Evans, similar type of story, been on my radar. He's going to come in as the box-to-box -box midfielder, sort of a backup option, a little bit of growth in him, not costing us a great deal in wages. He'll do as a backup. I'll take that. And then Tom Price was the third centre midfield I bought in the, in the matter of like two days. And again, he will do a job behind the two centre midfielders. You'll see our tactic in a little while now. And yeah, decent backup option. So they were the centre mids I brought in literally a few days apart. Cameron Berry we brought in. And this guy I was quite excited about. He's had a decent career with Swansea in a good training academy. Went to Carmarthen last year and did okay. We picked him up on a free. Good technique, good vision. Again, he's just going to be a backup player, potentially in the Mazala role. So, Jack Davis. I wanted a backup winger stroke complete wing back who could play in both wings and this was probably the best out there and really he's not that good if you look at his crossing and dribbling of three technically he's never going to be good enough for what we want let's be honest even if we move that up by three or four we're still poor so he's a backup he can play on both sides he will suffice now, after that, we've got Rhys Davis, who is our backup goalkeeper. We've got Ruddy Dibble, who did my head in last year. And this lad came to us from Leicester. Never played, but again, a good bit of potential. He's only 20, room to grow. He will do well for us. And then we move on to the low knees. Now, we're allowed six this year. There's only three here. It's because three of last year's low knees have returned. So let's look at the new boys first of all. I'm going to start with Sears, who's probably the, the weaker of the three. Probably the six, actually. And he's going to be potentially our starting right back. We've got a lot of right backs, and it's still the weak area of our team. But he's got potential. He's got good ability. 
technically he's the best we've got at right back and defensively he's the best we've got. So I don't know. He's on the fence for me at the moment. Now the, the second best of the three is this lad, Daniel Williams, and really impressed with him in pre-season. Those goals, the three goals, came in one game, an at-trick against a, a decent side, actually. And he's been playing this deep-line playmaker on defend. Now, he's our defensive part of the puzzle in the midfield. So, as you can imagine, our tactic this year is we're going to score more than you. As if he's going to be our defensive linchpin, we're going to be screwed. But look at him. Very, very impressed with this guy. I think he's going to do bits. Physically good, mentally strong in good areas, and technically fantastic. 14 passing, 3 tech. I like what I see. He does suit the register role, but you tend to find a register will push up the pitch a lot more. This lad will sit back and pull the strings. And then this lad, a little bit further up the pitch, Sean Spence, kind of went under the radar. Picked him up. Just thinking, ah, I'll get another person in as a backup to wait in that advanced playmaker role. But when you compare him to James Waite, man, that's an improvement, isn't it? And there's something more special with Sean Spence. Because if we look at our competition in the National League, the preview, he's one of the best players there. The only reason he's not on here because these are better than him. But in terms of the key players for us, we've got Sean Spence and Jamie Thomas are still in there. I think simply for the goals he scored last year. He's not the best striker in the league, but he's done well. And our preview, lads, last year we were lingering 18s to 20s. We're up in the dizzy heights of 7s. We're going to get nosebleeds if we go any higher. So, yeah, it's been... A very interesting pre-season. There's a few more faces due to come in. Following the theme, as I mentioned. Charlie Knight, who is with us already, but he's going to go out to Merthyr on loan. Great. And he actually came to our academy. Fantastic. Phil Brockaway from Aberystwyth in that defensive midfielder role. Massive areas of improvement. But again, he's free. 16, room to grow. And this lad... Quite excited about him. Stephen Adam, striker, five star potential, target man, question mark, pressing forward, probably. Areas to grow, position and concentration are dreadful. But he's got a decent polygon, and I think he'll do okay for us. So that's the ins. That's the preview of the league. Financially, there was a big dip, as you can see, and a big upward trend so we had a bit of money at the end of the season and thankfully the club put it into the youth facilities which can be huge for us in this type of save we're going to bring our own players in and hopefully they will become mainstays in the team so do be finished before christmas very happy but that cost us like 1.4 million so our money shot down but as you can see it's gone up and that is because our season ticket sales nearly seven hundred fifty thousand pound to date Last year, just shy of one million. So hopefully a little bit more money coming in. Very happy with that. So in terms of the team, lots of upheaval, lots of change. And dynamically, we haven't got many team leaders. It's just Divon, who still supports me. But really below that, there's not that many. A lot of loanies kind of fill in the gaps, really. Highly influential players. Louis Gray is there, but we had a bit of a Barney. Basically, I took Vaughan off the captaincy role and gave it to Lemony Evans and put him into vice-captain, and they all kicked off. Absolutely went nuts. And Louis Gray seemed to take particular offence to it. But we kissed the maid up. I took him to Nando's, and he is loving life at the moment. So, without further ado, tactics and a game. Okay, here are the tactics, and I'm sticking with it. Last year, we chopped and changed way too much, and it really messed up our end-of-season form. So, this is it. 2-3-2-1-2, two, 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 or a 4-4-2 four, four, diamond wingback, whatever you want to call it. And, do you know what I've done? I've taken a step back. I've realised that maybe I need to grow tactically, and I watched a fantastic video by FM Simo on YouTube. Link in the description. He gives his top 10 tips of tactical analysis that he's learned all throughout the years and 
do you know what? I learned a lot. And there's a few things I put in here. For example, if you align the two center backs, the same rows, in theory, they should move up and back together. If you, for example, changed him to a stopper or cover, they kind of shift, they do. But really, in terms of a defensive line, the control off sides and the balls over the top is what I'm going with. And the one thing he said to me was stuck the most is to put the players into your tactical setup, not the other way around. Don't try and change your setup to suit the team, like Thomas, for example, wants to be advanced forward. No. Pressing forward attack, that's who you're going to be. And that's what I'm going to stick with. This is my mantra going forward. I want the core of the team to be in the center with our technical players out wide. Wingers, we don't tend to do much with because the inside forward is cut in regardless. So this will be our width and this will be our creativity. On the floor, pass, 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 bang, goal. Simple. Copy, paste, all the way through. So I've learned a lot. Check out that link in the description. He's a great guy. I learned a lot from the video. See what you think. But for now, let's get into the game. Okay, here's the team that we are starting with. Our best 11 on paper. Gray in goals. Jones and Davis centre-backs. Williams controlling the midfield with Blake and Sears either side. Lemming, he Evans and Sturk in the centre. With Spence up top. Just behind Thomas and Samuel. Popping the goals in for fun. So, it's been a decent pre-season. We haven't lost and we've played against some decent size. League One teams galore. Now, Chesterfield, today's opponents are up there as one of the league favourites. I think they're due to finish fifth and we're seventh. So it's going to be a hotly contested game, no doubt. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we do. Excited to get back into the second season. If you are, give us a big thumbs up on the video, please, guys. Let me know that you're enjoying it. And it's been a decent start in terms of statistics. We're dominating possession. We've had more shots. Just no bloody highlights. 20 minutes in. Come on. I want to see our new players in action. Half hour in. And this has been a quiet affair. But here we go. Sears with a big throw into Thomas. Is that... Oh, you automatically think penalty then. But get back. Dunk is clear. Bounces down. Williams back there but he's not very good defensively he gives it to Sturkey Lemming he's there great ball Samuel over the top he's through and he misses Codden with a good save tipping it over the bar okay Blakey into Sears back to Blakey it's a free kick he's offside that was dreadful boys come on free kick right back in their corner and they break with Mandeville out wide who skips past Blakey don't let him cross it in, son. Good tackle. No, it's bounced back to Wilson. Into Wakefield. And they've got a lot of space in the midfield, considering we've got four players. And Dunk just walks past that right back and should have done better. That right back position is going to haunt me. I can tell it. But not bad. Still on the ascendancy. Still doing well against a good team. But that is a pretty dire first half, isn't it? But maybe one last highlight before... Half time. Blake puts it in there. And Tristan Jones gets the first goal of the season. Well done, my son. We've seen it before. A near post header. And we'll see it again. Boom. Get in there. And if you notice what I've done this season. I didn't put the fans in last year. We didn't have anybody in the stadium. But now, rather than it being empty. There might be three or four boys in there that you see. So, second half. Some half decent performances and some poor shows. Sears on a 6.4. Sturkey on a 6.5. Definitely room to improve. And we're already winning. So come on. Big clearance. Lemony Heavens into Spence. Into Sturkey. Good pass out to Sears. Loads of space. Can he get a ball in? Nice and composed into Samuel. Head up. Sturkey's there and makes it 2 0. Get in there. Good play. That's what I want. Composed, keep it into feet. None of these massive balls into the air that the defenders will win. C is composed into Samuel, dinks inside, takes his time. Sturkey 
who's not the tallest player, but gets a great header into the bottom left-hand corner. Get in there. Insta highlight. Is it 3-0 or is it 2-1 or is it just a nothing highlight? Comes into Blakey. Composed, passing round. I'm loving it. Sturkey into Spence, who's dipping back a bit deeper than I really want. But Blakey's there. Can he get the ball in? Yeah, yes, he maybe can. Third time lucky into Thomas. 3-0. Oh, my word. Three minutes into the second half, and we've got our second goal. God knows what Blakey's doing by here. Come on, boy. You got a bit lucky there, didn't you? Had a dance. Looked up. Again, just passed it into him. Not hoofing it up there. It's going to be a big part of this year's tactic. And really, three goals in three minutes. You think of it that way. Great, great start to the season to date. I'd love a clean sheet as well. We didn't get many last year. And do you know what? I've just... Oh, thank God. I thought I'd jinx myself. I genuinely do. Come on. We have got our backs against the wall here. Hoskins out wide. Get the ball. Rowley's there. Do Wakefield straight into grey? Okay. How are we looking fitness-wise? Not too bad. C is still struggling at 6.7. Jack will come on for his debut. One thing this boy has got is pace. Technically, he is shite, but he can run. And Lemon, he will come off for Cameron Berry for his debut. And I'm going to leave that for now. Spence isn't having the best game, but he's got the quality. I want to keep him on that pitch just a little bit longer. Right, 20 minutes left. Can we do anything else? Statistically, it's been a very average game. But the main stat is all that matters. A 3-0 lead to us. And it's a clearance from them. They hoof it up. And they keep the ball that time. But again, this is the one thing that we did all last season. Hoofed it into anybody and lost the ball. And that's why we conceded so many goals. This year, we're keeping the ball. On the floor, into feet, dominating possession. Right, one more sub, minutes to go. Um, Reese Gabriel, Reese Gabriel will come on for Samuel. I want to try and give him a few more minutes this year. Oh, Gabriel. Still got the potential. But with the other good players we brought in, he doesn't stand out as much as before. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A 3 0 victory against a team tipped to finish above us is not a bad way to start the season wow i'm happy with that in terms of the start of the year we've got a busy september and august in front of us and i believe yes middle of october is when we start our fa cup journey and that's when we're going to come back for i'll give you an update on the season which will be quite a few games in so we'll know where we stand and hopefully We'll have a more successful FA Cup journey than last year. So thanks for joining me. It's been a great start to the season. Like I say, if you've liked it, please give a thumb up. And don't forget to check out Simo's video. Link in the description. I've been Johnny. It's JDFM. You guys take care.